What is up, everybody? This is Deeper Depths, the host of the Deeper Level podcast. And let me tell you, we have an incredible podcast lined up for you tonight. Now, listen, if you are watching us live right now, go ahead and make your presence known in the chat. I see some of you on what is going on. Shajiri, if I'm saying that right, Dilios, I see a couple of others on. If you are gathering in right now, that's it. That's it. You're popping in. You're popping in. Make sure that you like and subscribe. If you're watching us on YouTube, YouTube right now, hit that like and that subscribe button and also ring the notification bell so you're notified every time that I go live and more content becomes available right here on this channel. Listen, this is season two of the Deeper Level Podcast. We have been uh, extremely honored to have so many uh, highly esteemed guests on the channel. We've interviewed Tony Todd. We've interviewed Stephen O. Young, who played Red Hood on Gotham Knights. We've interviewed Tommy Jenkins, who was also a part of Gotham Knights. Uh, uh, we've interviewed so many people, so many special people that I hold near and dear to me on this channel. Sadat the Gamer, J Shock Blast. Listen, and let me tell you, we have an incredible podcast lined up for you. So we are back with season two and we have several guests lined up over the next few coming months. And so I am just grateful to have the opportunity to sit down with these individuals. So that's it. Come on, like, share, make sure that you get the word out, share it on my Twitter. I've also shared the link on my Twitter because you do not want to miss this tonight. I promise you we are in for a treat as it relates to this podcast. Yo, what up sleeper kid? My guy, he is a sub to the channel. Oh, over on Twitch as well as YouTube, longtime member of the stream here. We appreciate you, sir. And just to all of you who are coming in, make sure that you again continue like and subscribe. We got to get the word out because I promise you this is going to be incredible on tonight. Well, without further ado, I know some of you all seen uh, the flyer. You've seen the announcement. My special guest today is a top tier content creator on YouTube with a staggering 608. 18,000 subscribers, one of the absolute best sources for news and updates on gaming. I have actively followed his channel for years, and we are honored tonight to have him take time out of his busy schedule to hang out with us on the Deeper Level Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, can you help me welcome my very special guest, Mr. Caboose? What is up, Caboose? How are you, sir? Dude, I mean, when you, when you follow up by saying you interviewed the legendary tony todd and and even legendary stephen o young and be like oh yeah and then caboose on the podcast dude i don't know the candle to those guys but i really appreciate you having me on today and for all the kind words i mean you we we got connected because of that interview you did with tony todd that i mean you broke some news stories that day with him uh talking about venom and spider-man 2 and all that and i mean thank you for what you're doing here and for keeping us fed for all the people that have been waiting for Marvel <laughs> Spider-Man 2, man, myself included. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Listen, I, I thank you so much. You, you know, you've been a huge inspiration to me. And I was sharing with you briefly before we came on the podcast that, uh, you know, I've actually been the first time I ever heard of what a content creator was. Uh, I was actually introduced to your channel. And I think at the time, you know, you may have had probably 10,000 subscribers. I came in, I've been rocking with you for a long time. So oh, to man, thank you here and sitting down with you, man, it means the world to me. Um, you have all of these incredible things going on, man. You are living the dream. I mean, your book for comic con things, uh, exclusive trips, uh, to chat and get a first look, uh, sitting down with developers. I mean, you are right there hands on. Um, I do want to say this, the culture in schools nowadays has shifted. Uh, I'm an old head, you know, I'm not just super old, but I'm a little, little older, I'm a little seasoned. And when I was growing up, I could remember they would ask us in elementary, what did we want to be when we growed up? You know, and of course, most people were doctor, lawyer, nurse, things of that nature 30 years ago. Yeah. But now the culture has shifted. My wife actually is a teacher. And when they ask kids what they want to be now when they grow up, we're hearing YouTube content creators. Uh, so what an interesting time we live in, uh, you know, when esports are a part of the curriculum. And I just wanted to say that because the very career that you're excelling in right now, you inspire so many people that you would have no idea. There's people that watch you and just aspire to be, you know, where you are now. Of course, 
a lot of times when people see it, they don't understand the actual work that goes into it. I, I've been creating content now for about one and a half years. And of course, when I first got started, I'm thinking, OK, all I need caboose is a webcam, a PlayStation 5, and I'm ready to go. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> started, yeah, I realized the level of work that goes into it. So the first thing that I kind of want to talk about being on a massive scale like you are, 618,000 subscribers. How do you how do you manage it all, man? Because I people will never understand how much work you put into this and to stay consistent as you've been throughout the years and to keep your content fresh, to keep it exciting. How do you deal with it all? Um, I mean, I, I come from around the same time when I was in school where like you didn't hear buzzwords like I want to be a content creator. I want to be a YouTuber or this and that. Like, so for me, I mean, that's I wouldn't even say that it's what I originally like aspired for either. Like for me, I was a big fan of film. I, I really loved like movies, the experience of going to the movies. Um, and so like my end goal was to be like a director. I wanted to be in the chair. I wanted to be making movies. And I even like my post-secondary degree that I got, it was from film. Wow. Um, okay. And so like originally that was the plan. Um, but always like in the back of my mind, I had this like, oh, like it's just fun to like make YouTube videos. Like when I was in middle school and when I was a little kid, before I went to school, I'd be up at, you know, 7, 8 a.m. just watching YouTube videos, you know, just watch my favorite content creators, um, whether they're playing Call of Duty or at the time, I think like Borderlands, the first Borderlands was coming out. Yeah, I was a big yeah. fan of that. Um, and so like, yeah, that was always like in the back of my mind and maybe like the way it kind of conjoined with my love for film is that I always wanted to do something like entertainment wise. Like I just, I wanted to be creating something for people to consume and enjoy and be entertained by. Um, and, and in some ways, you know, I, I guess, yeah, like I, I reached a certain version of that goal and it all kind of started like after I graduated from film school, it was just like a domino effect with Injustice 2 coming out and finding some some pretty rapid success with the channel and thinking, you know, like, I got to just take this full time and just go like full throttle at it. Um, but yeah, like I, like you, like I said, I, I come from a time where people were not thinking about that. You know, even when I first thought about potentially doing YouTube full time, it was like, that's a big leap. That's a scary leap. You know, um, yeah. now it's just it it's it's everywhere <laughs> there's, there's like a formula to the way content is created these days tiktok is just taking over youtube shorts taking over um and it's unbelievable and honestly it's it's really exciting because as somebody who's been making content for 10 plus years uh i always want to see like what's next what's the evolution yeah. and how do i keep my ear to the ground you know how do i stay you know like how do i keep on pace with the new young bucks coming in um, and that for me is a fun part of the job. Wow, that that is incredible. And and again, um, staying on pace, as you said, staying in rhythm, staying current with what's out. You know, like yeah. I'll see things break uh, on Twitter, and you know, boom, I look around, and you've got a video up and ready to go. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. and you know, I'm probably still hitting the edit button when you're putting your video out. You know, so I just want to say congratulations and just kudos to how you run your stream. I mean, everything from sound lighting, because again, these are the things that people never take into account. You know, they think They're that huge. it's easy and, oh, okay, I can just get in front of a camera and I'm ready to go. But so much goes into this and to be consistent like you are and to have been for 10 plus years, that is a testament to uh, your work ethic and your character. And I just want Thank to you. publicly say, Kudos to you, man. You know, you you inspire a lot of us, so many of us. Um, what was the toughest threshold? I mean, being at 618,000 subscribers, like what was the hard, hardest part? Was it maybe the first thousand uh, subscribers or did like maybe you get to 10K and it was tough to get to 25? Where did or where did you lose count? Like where did you just look up one day and say, oh, my God, like this is the real deal? Honestly, I, th I think, like I said, it was once Injustice 2 came out where things really started to, like, like get out of control. Not that I, like, to be honest, I've always, like, I've always been keeping an eye on it. I always, like, I, I still, to this day, you see, and especially YouTube's been very helpful where you see a little icon and you see how long somebody has been subscribed to your channel. Yes. I always, like, 
I keep in mind the people that have been subscribed for five, six, seven years. You know, those are people that you see regularly in your comment section. And you try not to forget, you know, like, yeah, I know it's it's impossible to keep track of 618,000 people, but you try not to forget some of the people that have been there since day one. And now, I mean, you're one of them, you know, you, from what you've been telling me, you're you're one of those people that that have been like that ride or die watching the content that I've been creating. But to answer your question, like it probably was for me, definitely the, the hardest part was getting over that hump from like zero to 10K. Got um, it. That that is like you feel every new subscriber you get excited about which is like yeah. it's honestly there's something like very humbling about that there's something that's really nice about that um but man it's like you just want to push you just want to keep pushing once you see that like 10k you're like oh my goodness like wait a second like i'm on to something here you know yeah. even when i when i remember when i hit a, a thousand subscribers i was uh i was maybe like in my freshman year in high school and I was riding the bus home with a buddy of mine and he was like you know my brother said that people who hit a thousand subscribers are like big time and like I must have I must have been with the biggest smile on my face for the whole week after hearing something like that because that to me meant like you know like I might be on to something here because at the end of the day the best way to go about it is to just put in perspective a thousand people in yes. front of you even a hundred yes. like if you have a hundred subscribers think of a hundred people standing in front of you wanting to listen to what you have to say that is wow. unreal wow. to think wow. about. And I mean, to, to see where it's at now, you know, like some people would say things like, dude, you can like fill a stadium with your subscriber count. It's like, I don't even want to like, it's hard to like even picture that. It's hard to like even imagine that um, without like my mind starting to melt. But yeah, it is pretty amazing. It is pretty amazing. But that hardest, the hardest hump to hit was that one to 10,000, zero pretty much to gotcha. 10,000 subscribers. But once we got, once I got past that, I was like, okay, I like, I'm on to something here. I got to just keep going. You know, it, it was never something yeah. I got to do full time. I got to quit my day job or I got to quit school. Like I always made sure I put my education first. If there's any advice that I was going to give anybody is to put your education first, no matter what. Um, but once I knew like, okay, like we got a bit of a rhythm here, something, something's working. Then you start to like legitimize it, you know, get an email up and running, like start, start networking, getting your voice out there, getting your name out there and then see where it goes. And, um, well, I guess I guess here I am today. Wow. You know what you and, and this is why um, these podcasts are so beneficial, because you just put it into perspective of a way that I've never even thought about it. Like imagining having 100 people in front of me or yeah. a thousand people in front of me or just to even have the thought process of what someone told you, like, man, you could fill a stadium of 90,000 people um, just based on your subscriptions. And that is you've given me a new level of thinking with how to really think about the impact that any of our channels have. Um, you know, because like you said, it is something to be proud of and something to have a sense of fulfillment, you know, but the fact that you didn't stop there, that you kept grinding, that you kept going, that really says a lot that you never did just settle to say, okay, look, it stops right here. Uh, and, and I really wish I, I'm going to put a banner up for those that are watching now uh to follow caboose uh oh, sub you, to that channel you know let's get this gentleman to a million subscribers that's I mean, the goal that's what <laughs> yes, we're trying sir. to get to man yeah a, a million brother you are on your way um <laughs> i do want to say and you kind of covered another one of my questions about that tips and advice to aspiring content creators and and i know my wife is going to be uh excited to hear what you just gave even to those that are in school you know to put their education first mm -hmm. because it's almost like, you know, because results vary. Um, it's almost like the NBA or the NFL, you know, a very select few reach the level that you've reached. So I yeah. think it's very realistic. And I love that advice to yet keep your education first. I mean, hey, you'll know if you have something with it. Uh, yeah. But but I really love that, man. That's that's so good. So you actually answered one of my questions. Uh, I do want to ask you this. I saw that you actually had an opportunity to get flown out to the premiere of Black Adam. Uh, I actually saw the picture you posted. If, if there is probably one uh, icon out there right now, uh, just uh, A-list superstar, it's definitely The Rock, yep. Dwayne Johnson. And to see that you had the opportunity to not only make the movie premiere, but to meet him. Yeah. Uh, what was that like meeting the rock? 
Um, well, so that was in that was actually here, like in my hometown. That was in Toronto. Okay. Um, but like, thankfully, I've had a good relationship and I've worked in uh, plenty of times in the past with uh, with Warner Brothers and their Canadian side. Um, and so they just they hit me up and they were like, hey, we got this opportunity. The Rock's going to be in town. You want to go see Black Adam? And then we'll have it like for me. All they told me, they were like, you're going to be with a group of people. We're going to put you in a room and you're going to take a photo like a, a, a professional like cameraman is going to take a photo of you and your group. Um, and it wasn't like I get to decide the group or something like that. It was just like a bunch of other people that were also invited, myself included. We're going to stand there with the rock, take a picture. And for me, like, listen, when I was a kid, like WWE was my life. All right. Like yeah. I yeah. love like I watched the, the rock, you know, Stone Cold. I mean, the Undertaker, like all those guys, the Triple H, Shawn Michaels, like those were my guys. You know, like I grew up Monday Night Raw, Friday Night Smackdown. I just I loved, loved, loved WWE. And so I was a, I was a fan of The Rock before. Well, I mean, he he was always he knew he was a mega star. You know, like this guy, there is nobody that that has like the mic in their hands and like gets it spit and fire like that guy yes. does. Yes. Um. And so like when when he was a star in WWE and then transcend into the into the film industry the way that he did. Like I've been a fan of his from from one end to the other. And so when they told me like you know you're gonna have like 30 seconds basically, I was like. That's just not enough for me, man. I I, I got to talk to this guy. I got to chat with this guy. Um, and it was honestly, it was a pretty like surreal experience because we walked in and like, listen, I, I know some people are saying some stuff about The Rock these days, but like I, I've never seen a celebrity like that. That's like the moment all of us walked in there, he made sure regardless of what anybody was telling him or however anybody was trying to rush him, he made sure he was going to take a minute hear all of us talk to him, you know, hear us out, say, nice to meet you, shake our hands. And, and like, for me, like, I, I remember the story of when I was six years old, I went to Monday Night Raw with my brother and he like returned to WWE at that time after like a bit of a hiatus to like make one of his first movies. Um, and so I wanted to tell him the story about that. And he just, he sat there, he listened to me attentively. He remembered even that night specifically when he was here wow. in Toronto um and it was like it was a really surreal experience and then after we took the group photo i wanted a photo with him personally yeah so i just pulled out my phone i said hey listen i don't mean to bother you and he was like don't worry about it and like we just took a little selfie together and it was again like i was like i was shaken after that moment because for me that wow. felt like 20 years plus in the making for yes. my life um and so that was a really incredible experience and i mean like the movie listen, wasn't the greatest comic book movie of all time by any right. means right but um, but it was it was fine. Like it was enjoyable. I mean, when you're seeing it full of theater, like in a theater full of people that are just excited to be there, it elevates your experience a little more. And although it means nothing now, I mean, seeing that post credit scene with Heather Cavill was pretty incredible at yes. the time. Yes. Um. But yeah, again, just a just a really cool experience overall. Wow! Wow! Yeah. That that is incredible. I mean, you know, if there was a list of people that I could say I would want to meet as far as celebrities um he definitely would be one of them so yeah. i know yeah. that that was just an electrifying moment and i'm so Unreal. proud brother that you had an opportunity <laughs> just to experience that and like that this is 20 years in the making you know because you grew up seeing these people and you know i was always a super fan i, I don't follow wrestling as much now but back in that era where there was yeah. wcw and WWF, I mean, yeah, man, just growing up watching him, he is one of the ultimate, uh, I would say the greatest entertainer of all time as it relates to uh, wrestling. Like you said, a, a mic in his hand is just electrifying with the yeah. way that he just. There will never be around. a better feud than The Rock and Stone Cold. Like that was yes. Yes. like the end all for, for wrestling for me. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Man, that is good stuff. Um. I kind of want to shift gears just a little bit as we get into some gaming, because I know, you know, there's a lot of people who are watching now and who are going to restream this, uh, who are looking to hear a conversation about gaming. Of course, you know, you are yeah. one of the biggest uh, gaming content creators. I know you can't predict the future, but if you had to pick a single game for 2023 that's going to pull in the game of the year spot, what would you give it to? Oh, um, that's a good question. I know Jedi, the, the new Jedi Survivor, just uh, just came out with some pretty great reviews. I know Dead Space Remake also got some big ones. Like, I feel like it would be it would be very biased of me to just be like, 
Spider-Man 2, but I do have this weird feeling, you know, similar to like when we had the Arkham games back in the day, you know, we got Arkham Asylum and we were like, yo, like this is actually like pretty sweet. Like this is, this is kind of cool. Like you got a Batman game, you got all these villains, this and that. And then we got Arkham City and was like, like, holy smokes. Like this yeah. is, this is more than just like a game. This is like a full on, like a Batman fan's dream right here. And beyond that, this is just a really good video game. Not just a good Batman game, but just a really good video game with great writing and good characters that have depth and it takes these like fantastical superheroes and supervillains and like grounds them but also keeps them within that comic book style you know that comic yes. book realm and so i have a feeling like spider-man 2 could end up being that we already got a glimpse at it in miles morales with like just first of all the graphical upgrades the fidelity yes. the way that everything looks especially in the playstation 5 but also the characters and their relationships to one another and sort of like what, what they were doing with um with Miles and, and all the people that surround him and his family. It was very interesting. And, you know, what he meant to Harlem. Yes. Um, I thought that stuff was great. And so if we're going to get that even further, if we're going to carry that even further into Spider-Man 2, we're entering that territory that Arkham City did. And so, like, I could see I could see Spider-Man 2 be one of those Game of the Year nominees and potentially be the winner. But I, I don't know. It's, it's going to be a stacked year so i really like yeah. i have no idea what to expect and and you know what the year really is stacked uh 2023 um is loaded with games um and speaking of which you know i know there's mixed reviews right now going on about the silence uh from insomniac now me personally it doesn't bother me again because the year is so stacked with great games yeah. that there is so much to play right now plus yeah. I trust the product that Insomniac is going to deliver. I mean, just them as a company, you know, playing Ratchet and Clank, playing the Spider-Man games that they put out. I mean, they know how to tell a story and they know how to develop a game. I mean, the casting of the lineup of characters. I mean, Yuri Lowenthal, uh, Najee Jeter, uh, Tony, Tony Todd, Todd yeah. <laughs> as Venom, bro. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that with casting. Yeah. So, the silence doesn't really bother me. Um, I know there's talks of an upcoming uh, PlayStation showcase. Do you think we may see something? Because here's my thoughts. I'm thinking, okay, uh, Sony knows that they're in a great position with this game. I mean, they yeah. know it's the most anticipated game, hands down, mm -hmm. of 2023. So if if I was running marketing, I'm knowing that, you know, it's it's – you know, patience is key. They don't have yep. to rush because we're going to be there. But you've got across the Spider Verse coming out, um, you June. know. And so, do you think maybe is it possible to get? Because the last time with Miles Morales, we've got a special suit uh, from the movie that was included in the game. So they had mm -hmm. some cross promotion and cross marketing there. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't that seem like a better opportunity to allow? across the Spider-Verse to have it shine first and then drop a glimpse of what Spider-Man 2 may look like? Um, I think you're you're making sense here, right? Like you're you're definitely what you're saying. I understand it, but I will say like I'm like 99% sure at this point and I'd be really surprised. I, I, I'll, I'll, let me mention this first of all. I don't have any inside information, okay? Sure, sure. I don't know anybody. Absolutely. All right, I, I have done nothing but speculate about this game since day one. Uh, you know, like that's that's it. All right, let me just make make that very much clear before anybody like starts to try and run with this. Right. <laughs> um, but I am like ninety nine percent sure, per my own speculation and per what other people are saying, you know, through the grapevine, that one month from now we'll be watching or have already watched a PlayStation showcase. Okay. Um, and we're like almost certainly going to be getting something new for Spider Man Two. Um, I think it makes sense, like you said, to like let across the Spider Verse come out, let that promotional, like let let the marketing happen for that movie, let it shine, let it be the Spider Man product that people look forward to consuming, and then move on to Spider Man Two. Um, but if the game is coming out in September, like you know one of your previous guests, Tony Todd, has, has said, <laughs> uh, if that game is coming out in September, then they they got to start that marketing really soon. And so I'm expecting a reveal during that PlayStation Showcase which everyone is saying is happening in May. And then it's just going to be this nonstop hype train until September. Yes. Uh, and for I, for one, 
listen, I'm a Spider-Man fan, whether it's Miles, whether it's Peter, whether it's Miguel O'Hara, whether it's Gwen Stacy, whoever. I'm a Spider-Man fan, ride or die. I don't care who it is. If it's Spider-Man content, I'm there. So yes. I'll be there for Spider-Man 2 on the PlayStation 5. I'll be there in theaters in June to watch Across the Spider-Verse. I'll be there for whatever the next Tom Holland movie is going to be. You know, you you got me. You got my ticket no matter what it is. As long as it says Spider-Man, I'm there. I'm in. Yes, sir. Yeah. A- yeah. Absolutely. I am with you, brother. Uh, so so probably, um, yeah, so I get it. That makes sense. Uh, next PlayStation Showcase, we see something. And, and I'm just yeah. um, ready to see probably Venom's character model more than anything. Me I too. See the size and the scale. You think he's going to have the symbol? It, it, I think he's going to have the symbol. Yeah. I, I really hope he has the symbol. Um, so I'm really ready to see what his character model uh, is going to look like. You know, mm-hmm. I, I do feel that, again, that's game of the year, in my opinion, um, just based on the type of games they produced uh, in times past. And, you know, this is going to be bigger and better. And, of course, we're hearing that the world, the map itself uh, is going to be expanded, you know, yep. new boroughs. Yep. It, it's just so much to look forward to. Um, shifting gears just a little bit. Uh, today on the official Twitter account, of WB Games Montreal Gotham Knights. Mm-hmm. Um, they tweeted a picture of the villains with the statement, the big bads of Gotham Knights have gathered, but why? Um, and again, you know, if 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 you're not at liberty to speak on anything, then that's fine because we don't want to jeopardize NDAs or anything like I that. Got, I, I got you... nothing. I got okay, nothing. Okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I know you had the opportunity to fly or to go out and meet the team and meet the devs. So I, I don't want to put you on the spot. But when that mm-hmm. was tweeted today, I mean, my heart just got happy, man, because I really like the game, you know, and in spite of the 30 FPS gate, if you want to call it that, <laughs> and people whining about that, I mean, I really thoroughly enjoyed the game and I'm I'm glad that they made it. And even the post content that they created, uh, do you see DLC coming? If you just had to speculate, do you think they're giving us a, uh, a hint that we're getting something else. I, I heard Catwoman stuff, which I don't know what that's about. Really, I didn't dig yeah. into that too much. But what are your thoughts on what we saw today? I, I mean, so I know for a little bit there was some concept art floating around of some things that they didn't end up potentially that they didn't end up putting in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like that stuff they like they would have had the the opportunity to post it online if it was going to be DLC. So that's why, like you know, I, I talked about it in my video today. I don't think there's going to be any extra characters that they add to the game. I feel like if there were going to be, then whatever tease they put out today would have been very different. Sure. Um, so whatever, like I do think some, something like some new content is on the way in some way. Um, it's just like, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on what side of the fence you're, you're leaning towards, it might just have to do with the villains that we already faced off against in the game. My best guess is like a raid of some sort. Got it. Got it. Um, I mean, it's an RPG at the end of the day. So maybe just like, you know, we had the heroic assault thing with the four players, so maybe something of that level, and you're facing off against, like, Harley Quinn, Mr. Freeze, and Clayface, like, at the same time. Something sure. crazy like that. Who knows? I mean, it could be pretty interesting. could be pretty fun. I mean, I'm, I'm looking for an excuse to jump back into the game because I, I did enjoy it. Um, I mean, I have my issues with it, The obviously the 30 FPS thing being sure. one of them. Um, but, like, I for me, it's like, I don't know. Like, I, I don't necessarily go into every game thinking like this is going to be the next masterpiece and i certainly don't want to go into a game hoping that it's going to be terrible right um and so i, I walked away from gotham knights being like you know what it's fine it's a seven out of ten game you know it's, it's got some issues for sure like some things sure. that i would have wished were better um but also it's like it's not like offensive you know? like, <laughs> like i i didn't i didn't think like like how dare they right uh, or anything like that like it was just it was just fine and i feel like a lot of, a lot of times these days like people are are i don't know their their expectations are like a little wild and um and i think we just we no longer can have like a 7 out of 10 game anymore you know like or even like a 6 out of 10 game where it's like yes hey listen like you want to grab this on sale like you'll probably have some fun with it there's no problem with that um but yeah like it's not the next masterpiece or something like that it just feels like if it's not 10 out of 10 it's terrible right you know and i'm just i'm just not about that anymore yes sir yes yeah. sir awesome awesome mm-hmm. uh you know when i saw that i was like uh wow you know i i just want to hear uh, what his thoughts may be on the matter <laughs> when they tweeted that I was like, 
what perfect time. And, you know, we've got a yeah. podcast tonight. <laughs> I, I, w- I hope in again, in my fantasy land, like I would want them to do a Batman DLC. Uh-huh. Like, just have it take place before the game. But I, I, I don't think it's going to happen. I feel like they wanted this game to just focus on, you know, the, the protégés. Right. So, mm-hmm. like, fair enough. That's their vision. That's what they wanted to do. But like the design is too cool. And what they did in that, like, first 20 minutes of the game that's got to be one of like the coolest like Batman anything that I've yes. watched. And so it just makes me sad that we're not going to get like more of that. But what can you do? Yes, sir. And and while we're talking DC, um, in February, as part of one of the state of plays, there was an exclusive uh, yes. uh, 12 minute um, showing of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League mm-hmm. by Rocksteady. Now, I was extremely looking forward to the game releasing in May, but after that, they showed that extra 12 minutes or that exclusive 12 minutes of footage, the internet went nuts. I mean, I really feel that um, I think May was a great time because for that type of game as a looter superhero game, it's really dry right now, you know, especially with the plug getting pulled on Avengers and them no longer, Uh, creating uh, support for that and continuing that game. I just think that there was a great window of opportunity for Rocksteady to drop then. Of course, if the game is not ready, the game is not ready. Now, of course, I probably would have liked to see uh, more melee mechanics uh, incorporated in the game. However, that for me would have been something we could have fixed going along the way, you know, give us the game. But uh people it could be something that is in the game we have no idea and they could they would have just shown it at another point you know a- absolutely I-, yeah. I just think that the backlash bullied rocksteady and correct me if i'm wrong but i just feel like they allowed the backlash to bully them into number one delaying the game but to delay it almost a year makes me afraid that they're going to change what the original vision of the game was intended to be um yeah what are your thoughts on on this whole Suicide Squad deal? Uh, I, I think no matter what, like the game's locked in uh, in terms of just like what the overall structure of the game is. Okay. So if anybody was looking at this delay and was like, oh, like they're not going to make it like a shooter anymore and they're going to change this. And like that's probably not going to happen um, because I mean, okay. they've, they've been developing this game for who knows, like six years sure. at this point, maybe even longer. Um, and so you like, seven seven eight months or however long the the delay is from from may to now february it's just not not long enough to like strip away like core components to the gameplay um i do hope if there's anything they're going to do with this delay is to to pluck out that always online component yes that's that's the one big major issue that i have with what we did see um but other than that like okay the, the debate around live service games, there's there's people who are right on either end, um, and there's people who make great points on either end. Um, and I sit somewhere in the middle where, like, for me, yeah, as a content creator, the, to be a little selfish, it'd be nice to have a, a superhero game that constantly gets updated and constantly has content being added to it for me to be covering. That's fun for me. You know, it's yes. like there's always some news coming out. There's new characters. It's like there's always something to be excited about. It's, it's that's fun. You know, it's like when I covered Mortal Kombat or when I covered Injustice 2, you had like the main roster and there was always like, what's the next character being added into the game? And then they had the DLC where it's like, well, what's the next DLC pack? What's going to be in there? And it's just, it's fun to have stuff to continually looking forward to with your game. Um, but then comes the execution and a lot of live service games these days just haven't been, they, they've been very hit or miss, you know, it's yeah. several misses, if you will. Um, but Suicide Squad looks, I mean, there's some things about it that for me look pretty solid. Um, and I think a lot of people forget that the first ever Rocksteady game, Urban Chaos, is a shooter. It is a shooter game. Yeah. That is yeah. Rocksteady doing Suicide Squad as a third-person shooter is not them changing things up. It's not them doing something completely different from what they've done before. This is them actually going back to their roots. And if you even play something like Arkham Knight, when you get in that Batmobile and you're shooting the other tanks, I mean, it felt like a precursor to what we got today, no? You know, like, it, I think, like, a lot of people aren't paying enough attention to what Rock City's been doing and how Suicide Squad's a bit of a natural progression of that. Um, now, granted, would I want a Superman game instead of this? 
Yes, a million percent. Yes, <laughs> if I had all the money in the world, I'd buy WB games right now and I'd green light Rocksteady's Superman game tomorrow. But this is the reality we live in. This is the game that they wanted to make. This is the game potentially that got the green light from WB games. And for me, it's Rocksteady, man. Listen, yes, I, it could the game could be about Batman taking a crap on the toilet for 10 hours. I'm there. <laughs> you got my $60 because the Rocksteady logo is stamped on it. Okay? Yes, sir. Now, it, could it be bad? Maybe. But does that mean I'm not going to buy it? No, I'm sorry. It's the Rocksteady game. I'm going to have to be there. Got to be there. there day one. Absolutely. Yeah. I love it, my brother. Uh, yeah. Great point with uh, <laughs> Urban Chaos. Yeah. Excellent I think, point. I think a um, lot of people don't realize. Absolutely. They don't. And, you know, I'm just I'm here for whatever Rocksteady is doing, uh, just like Insomniac. Um, that's my sentiments. Exactly. You know, will mm -hmm. something have its flaws? Maybe who knows, but you know, take my money. You know, if it if it was 70 bucks, 80 bucks, <laughs> I'm still gonna try it and see what it's about. It um, could be terrible, but I'm not gonna not give it a chance. Exactly. Like, this exactly. is rock steady here, man. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, they are in the conversation um for one of the greatest development teams of all time. So we have to give them a chance for them to uh quote unquote take a risk on doing a game like this i trust the vision mm -hmm. of what they saw that this game could be so i'm i'm really looking forward to it again next february whenever it comes out i think it's february 2nd i will yes. be here for all of it yep. um you mentioned a superman game and a superman game is something that i would love to see um Although we are not there yet, they haven't said anything about it. If I had to say there is a game I would want to see uh, next to Superman as far as the flight mechanics, I think we could potentially get that in the next game that I want to talk to you about. Uh, Motive Studios, yes. after seeing what they did with Dead Space, brother, we are in for a treat oh, yeah. with the Iron Man game. Yeah. Um, I was watching your video on that and you made some excellent points in saying that um, it doesn't really need to be a linear style game. Uh, it needs to be like a giant sandbox giving us freedom uh, to visit different areas, to, yep. to fly there. I, I know this. there's a lot riding on this game, but I'm just as excited for an Iron Man game as I would be for a Superman game. What do you think we can expect uh, with and I know there's not a lot of details right now, but just elaborate that on a little bit, maybe for the benefit of those who didn't see your video of the mechanics of how this should work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, so I'll say this much like when Guardians of the Galaxy um, was first rumored to be like a game that we were going to get, um, like obviously everyone went crazy with ideas. Like, imagine if it was like open galaxy, you know, you could fly from planet to planet. That stuff sounds great. And yeah, like in a perfect world where somebody can develop that and make it perfect or make it great. Like, that would have been the better game. But it was a linear game, and it was very tight, just a little, like, 15, 20-hour experience. And I did think that it was great in that way. So if Iron Man ended up being just a linear experience, as long as it's got a good story, as long as it's got fun gameplay, and it's got all the little things that you kind of want out of superhero games, alternate suits, Easter eggs, this and that, that could be a great game. That could be a very worthy of your money. That could totally be, like, a game of the year contender even. But like I said, like, Iron Man is a character where like you just you need that freedom you know yeah. you want to be able to just fly up to the top of the map and look down on the skyline of whatever city is your sandbox and be like oh that little building there i can fly there oh there's a crime like 300 meters from where i am right now i gotta go stop it that was what was so great about spider-man you know we could in the skyline you could see avengers tower and you can just you can web swing over to it and just pop into photo mode and take a snap of the Avengers A with Spider-Man swinging through it. And something like that was just like, you, that's a Spider-Man fan's dream to have the controller in their hands, to feel like you are Spider-Man in this giant world that you can just play around in. You know, you don't have to worry about what's my next story mission. You can just right. go and swing through the city and have fun. And Iron Man needs that same treatment. And we just got rumors that they're hiring for a new position, senior writer. And apparently one of the qualifications is to have experience with open world games. Wow. which um, seemingly confirms that it's going to be open world, which is great. I'm happy to hear it. That's what you should do. Now I'm just wondering where, where do they put this guy? Because I'm not the most familiar with Iron Man for the comic books. I don't know what's kind of his hub 
I know New York's just the place to be for all the Marvel heroes, but I feel like Motive is smart to know, like, Insomniac's got New York on lock. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, they, that's theirs, okay? So I feel like they're, they're going to probably do something different. And it would be cool to put them on the West Coast, maybe have some West Coast Avengers-style thing going on there. Yes. Um, I think that could be really fun. Even having them in, like, California, you know what I mean? Like, Los Angeles, who knows? It could be pretty interesting what they could end up doing with that Iron Man game. And I think it has a ton of potential, like you said, especially after that Dead Space remake, man. I mean, yes, man, that I haven't played it, but it's a damn good-looking game. And yes. plenty of people have loved it. And so, I mean, we're, we are in good hands, just like you said. Absolutely. Yeah. Man, you know what? As we shift gears and, and come to a close, because, again, I, I want to uh, respect your time tonight because I know, like I said, you've got a million things going, man. Um, Thank you, man. Thank I want to close with this. Uh, Mortal Kombat 12. <laughs> I, I did not think that we would see it this soon, um, but it looks like this is getting ready to be a thing sooner than a lot of people thought that yep. it would be. If you had to select characters for MK12, who would you mostly look forward to seeing in MK12? Noob Saibot's my number one. Okay. So I'd love to see him come back. I want Cyrax and Sector. I love like the, the cyber ninjas, what they do with that is it's so cool. And I think MK11 was like sorely missing it. Um, so I hope they bring them back, even like Cyber Smoke, like all that stuff is like really, really cool. And just in general, like like Mortal Kombat was like built on the color swap, like ninjas, you know, when yes. they had Sub-Zero, Scorpion, then Ermac, and then, you know, Reptile, all them. Like, so I feel like we, we've we strayed from that a little bit in some of the recent MK games. They've been a little more like militarized and about the special forces, Johnny Cage, Sonya. And that stuff is cool. Don't get me wrong. But I want to see like ninjas doing like cool stuff you know like, yeah, i want to yeah. see some martial arts i want to see hand-to-hand <laughs> -hand combat i don't like i've had enough of the guns and like you know this and that like i just want to see some people like fighting and like having to just doing some cool stuff that's why like when we had the dlc for mk11 and they brought in like fujin and all yes. i thought that stuff was so sweet um and so i'm hoping they just crank that up to to 12 on this one um, and just have it be like all the ninjas that you remember from the old MK games, just, you know, going to war. Like, that would be cool. Yes, I love that. And I see, yeah. a, I see a comment from um, Gary Davis uh, saying that Reptile needs to return to his glory. Yes. And again, going back with the ninjas like you're talking about, I think that would be phenomenal. You know, uh, Ermac, um Rain, Noob Sabah, yeah, Tremor, uh, Scorpion, yeah. Sub Zero. It's it's just I would love to see that and incorporate more uh, martial arts mechanics. Now, of course, I always uh, would rock with who I nicknamed the Mad Hatter, which is Kung Lao. You know that was probably Great. my favorite yeah. um, to play with in Eleven in most of the games, but he really shined to me in Eleven. I love the way that uh, you know his kit was loaded out. I really want to see Quan Chi. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. I want to see him brought back. I loved him in Mortal Kombat 4. Uh, he was, you know, probably my favorite character to play with then. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've got a lot to look forward to. Do you think we see it this year? Um, does it happen in 23? I'm I'm very confident. I mean, I, I, apparently Warner Brothers Discovery is confident as well. They're the ones who leaked it. Um, and I think like when you have those little earnings calls, like every, you got to make sure that like, you know what you're telling your investors sure, so that they know what they're investing in. Sure. Um, and nether realms, nether realms good. Like they, they usually hit their mark. You don't, you don't usually see delays from them. Um, granted they, they've been on a bit of a different schedule lately. Usually they have, usually their games come out right about now. Yep. Um, but they've been, uh, they've been a little late. They've been taking a bit more time with this one. Um, and my my guess is it had something to do with that merger. Um, but yeah, let's uh, based on that earnings call, it's coming this year. So I'm thinking I'm thinking we're gonna we're gonna see we're gonna see a reveal like really soon, really soon. And then it's probably right around the corner, honestly, because what they did with MK11, it was revealed in December 2018 during the game awards, came out like five months later. So yes. I'd expect probably a similar cycle for MK12. You're gonna see it, and then it's it's gonna be coming out way sooner than you think. Because they, they like to keep their marketing budget tight because no people are going to buy it because it's more right. combat. 
you know absolutely wow yeah. phenomenal well you heard it here on the deeper level <laughs> podcast people uh my special guest caboose i want to thank you for coming on man taking time out of your schedule so much insight uh was given especially to content creators i promise you man you dropped gems today on this oh, thank podcast you. thank you um i really appreciate your time and just the opportunity to have this chance to chat with you um folks listen hit that like hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that follow button uh that notification bell so you're notified every time i go live and more content becomes available this is deeper depths and caboose signing off and we will see you again on the next stream thanks for having Peace. me